Welcome back to Beer with Nat. On every episode, I share a beer and a chat with people who do what they love for a living. They work in the beer industry. Today's guest is Lucy Doe, owner of the Dodo Micropub in Hanwell. Lucy tells us what a micropub is, what inspired her to open one, how she made it happen, and what she enjoys most about being a part of the beer industry. Here she is. So I should probably say disclaimer, I am a cask ale focused pub, but we are not drinking a cask ale today because you okay, told we me to... are. We're outside of service hours as yeah, well, so true. I don't want to make you work extra hard. <laughs> so you said bring a beer that is special to you. So I've brought the collaboration beer that I did with Weird Beard, mm-hmm. our local brewery just down the road Thank called you. The Dodo. Um, which is not actually called the Dodo after the pub, but called the Dodo after a song title by a punk band. Ah. I actually can't remember the name of Bad Religion. That's the name of them. Okay. But, so, you, but you lucked out and got your logo on there. Yeah, well. exactly. They were really good, and they stuck my logo right on the label. They've even shouted it out in the beer description. Oh, that's so, so nice. um, came together, discussed a recipe that we would really like to brew. I went down for the brew day. This is the second batch. Oh, and I just wanted to create something that I knew people who came in here frequently would absolutely smash. Mm-hmm. And it has transpired that it's become a really commercially successful beer for Weird Beard as well, which is like Amazing. That's exactly up. what you want. Yeah. yeah. So good for them and good for me. Like an honor to be brewing with them. Yeah. It's lovely and fruity. Yeah. Nose. Very fruity. Oh yeah. That's really good. Thank you. Especially for a nice sort of humid summer day yeah. today. Perfect. Well, I will drink plenty of this as I ask you loads of questions. <laughs> so you are the owner of the Dodo Micropub, where we are sat here today in Hanwell in Southwest London. My first question is probably a silly one, so we'll get it out of the way early. What is the difference between a micropub and a regular pub? And then let me know what inspired you to open one. So the main difference between a micropub versus a big pub company pub is um, it's very stripped back. So no TVs, no electronic distractions. The main form of entertainment is conversation. Nice. So the tables are set out around the periphery of the pub. So if people are facing each other. They're kind of forced to talk to each other, okay. whether they like it or not. <laughs> um, the tables are quite high, which means that if you're standing up next to somebody sitting down, your eye you're level... You're still engaged. Exactly. Okay. Um, so it's all about conversation flow, um, rotating beers constantly. So we don't have a house beer at all. We've had the dodo on quite a lot, but <laughs> yeah. uh, we this don't have a house around. beer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so people come in every week and can try different beers every week. That is the main difference. No food offering is probably the main thing that people notice when they come in here as mm. well. So all about the beer and the chat. Yeah, exactly. And what made you want to open up your own micropub? Uh, I always knew I wanted to be my own boss. So before I opened up the micropub, I spent like over 14 years in marketing for publishing companies, etc. And just started to get a bit tired of that, but knew I wanted to do something. I didn't know what it was. I went to a micropub in Kent and I just fell in love with the concept. Like, you know, the owner of that micropub spent time with me talking about the concept, just oh, as I do now. Mm-hmm. Uh, introduced me to some of the locals, you know, spent time just explaining what it was all about. And I was like, wow, why aren't there micropubs in West London where I live? Surely this is a thing that is going to work. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's what inspired me to do it. Yeah. So what does your day-to-day look like as a micropub owner? I can't imagine that any day is the same, but what are some of the things that you get up to in running your business today and yesterday are like not in the pub days for me so they're business admin days I call them they're quite boring it's just me and my dog and it's spreadsheets yep it's invoices it's making sure people are paid on time it's looking at staffing it's uh beer ordering and those really mundane tasks that you have to do if you own your own business and then pub days are obviously more fun because it's all dependent on who comes through your door so um, very consumer facing you get to engage with everyone that comes in exactly yeah take me back what were you doing before you decided to open the dodo you said you were working in marketing for 14 years yeah so what did that look like what did you think your career path was well I love marketing like you know I still enjoy that aspect of running my own business is having to do the marketing myself which is great um, and you're very good at it. We'll talk about you. your Instagram later on. <laughs> thank you. I'd like to think that I've still got it. But yep, yeah. right. You did it for long enough. I'd like to think that as well. I just stopped enjoying being part of the corporate world, if mm. I'm very honest. I set up the micro pub because I wanted to be more authentically me, which sounds really wanky, but uh, is probably the truth. Like I hated going into work on the nine to five office and then putting 
the smart clothes on and doing the fake thing and sitting in the big boardroom and, and that just became tiring. Yeah, yeah okay. tiring. So I thought, okay, well, the next step is obviously going to be to own my own business and then it's freedom and, you know, I'm working for myself and it's much more rewarding. And I assumed I would become a marketing consultant because that's all the skills that I had. Mm-hmm. And that's genuinely how I thought my career would pan out. Never, ever did I expect to open up a micropub and basically spend a lot of time having a good time with people in a cute little space and drinking some cool beers. Yeah, it is a very cute little space. Very well done. So you brought your marketing skills with you, but what else did you need to learn to open the business and get to where you are now? Oh my God, I had to learn everything. A lot. (laughs) A lot. It was a very steep learning curve. The first year of the dodo being open was full on, basically. Because not only was I trying to learn how to run a business, we had a really successful first year. Super successful, but I wasn't expecting. I thought so it's going to take... you were running a business and serving all your customers and needing to get staff in. And... Yeah. And actually, I didn't get staff in in the first year because I was so unconfident in how the first year actually looked because I didn't know whether I was doing well or not. I mm. knew it was busy and I knew it was exciting. But having never run a business before, I was like, I don't know if it is actually that successful. And I didn't have people to go... Well, I did. I had a mentor, actually, for the first year. But I was just so busy day-to-day running this place that I never really got to catch up with him as much as I would like to. And he would always say, yeah, you're doing great, but you need to beware about X, Y, and Z. And it just never happened. I just continued going full pelt and just working myself into the ground, if I'm honest, in the first year. Yeah. And so I've read that you did take a bit of time now in your second year to take a breather, take a step back, look at the pub from the outside as opposed to from the inside. Yeah. So how were you able to carve out time for that and what have you learned differently? I think I was forced to carve out time, so the first year was manic, as I said, and I got to the end of my first year and I was, like, burnt out. (laughs) I was running on adrenaline, like, everything, you know, was just good because it was way more successful in the first year than I ever imagined it to Mm -hmm. be. So I was forced into taking time out. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had, like, a hip injury. I think mentally I was done as well. You really did do yourself Yeah, Yeah. really bad. So anybody thinking of opening up their own business, I would say try to listen to like the manic first year and take a time out before you hit that point where you're like okay I'm forced into this yeah like there's no option I had to stop and luckily I did find people who would take on sort of the week and a bit out that I had when I was like oh I can't move I'm in a lot of pain here guys and then went to physiotherapy got myself better and came back fighting fit then employed staff Mm -hmm. Because I was like, I can't work. Get back to that place again. Yeah, exactly. Can't go back to that place. And realistically, the first year was, it could have been a fluke because we were the new business in town. So Mm -hmm. how do I make the second year not a fluke? So I need the time out of the business so I'm working on it to make sure that I am marketing it, which I never felt like I did in my first year. Mm. And I am listening to customers a bit more and finding out what they want from the dodo rather than me just throwing out, you know, five car girls constantly. Yeah, Yeah. it's fine. It's working. I don't need to worry about it. Like I've always wanted to work with the community that comes in this place. Yeah. So I read that you uh, you just did an interview with Virgin Startup yes. and you had gone to them to get some support from them to get the business going. Yeah. What was that process like of writing a business plan, of seeking out a loan and, you know, turning it into the place that you've got now? You mentioned you had a mentor. Yes. How did you go about those steps? The mentor came with the Virgin Startup loan. So obviously, oh, that's great. um Opening up a, a physical premises is, is an expensive thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, down to licensing, redoing the space. Yeah, it was expensive. So I had redundancy money from my last full-time role that I was in because I was made redundant. So I took that money. I had savings and then I still didn't have enough. So I had to go to somebody to try and help me with my business. Make this happen, yeah. yeah. And I knew that Virgin Startup probably were the right fit because of you know the culture that they create in terms of you know supporting startups etc they have a lot of food startups as well okay so I thought okay maybe they're gonna get the concept yeah Yeah. they're not gonna be like oh you're opening up a community focused pub like what's the point it's Mm. not different from anybody else Uh, the process was long (laughs) Uh, you know writing a business plan for the first time is not an easy thing and numbers if I'm very honest is not my strong point so then to have somebody they like would unpick the business plan Mm -hmm. over several months and ask me what felt like 101 questions Mm -hmm. but obviously they're securing their investment in what I'm trying to do they're only making you a better business exactly yeah and they made sure that I had everything 
business setup wise in the right order so they were like you go and find the premises first come back with us with the terms of agreement and then we'll talk about the next stage so I did that and then they're like okay now you need to go and get your license and secure this and then we'll talk about um, releasing oh, this funding to you that's great yeah because so. it can seem so daunting just waking up one day and saying right I'm gonna do this I want to have a micro pub yeah. to then break it down to all those little steps yeah Actually, someone's just telling you, put this foot in front of the other. Exactly, yeah. you get there. And they were invaluable at doing that. So they give you a business advisor during the business planning, you know, the financial planning stage before mm -hmm. you actually get the funding. And then as soon as I got the funding, they gave me a mentor for the first year. Great guy called David Franks. He wasn't in the industry, but he was food industry. Mm -hmm. And he was like exactly what I needed in my first year when I had no idea what the hell was going on. And I just felt really unsure about what I was doing mm -hmm. <laughs> as a new business owner he was like no we'd go into a meeting and he'd be like oh you're operating at x percent profit and you're doing this this and this and it looks like you'll be hitting this and I just like I don't understand where he's what got these figures saying? from yeah. yeah but it makes me feel better that I'm doing the right job um, and, and that was great do you feel like you can do those things now on your own can you look at that spreadsheet and understand profit I can and loss do and them more yeah definitely more do them more yeah I feel more comfortable but actually any of the financial side of my business I still outsource because it's just not my strong point it takes me five hours compared to somebody who might do it in 45 yeah. minutes who knows how to run a spreadsheet <laughs> yeah. yeah you've got the vision and the marketing side and the customer engagement side of things yeah. what do you feel are your strengths versus weaknesses in running the business good question strengths are Again, I don't know, sometimes I say this as an answer and I'm not sure whether it comes across <laughs> correctly. My strength is that I really care, like I actually give a shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's your business, of yeah, course. It's, yeah, it's, it's my your business. your brand and your yeah. idea. Yeah. I built it, I care that people are having a good time, um, you know, I care that it's a community focused space, I care that people want to come in here and spread kindness and be happy, uh, and that sounds really like a wishy-washy kind of goal but I would say that's my main strength mm -hmm. and I'm relentless so I blooming well work hard to make sure that it's, that's it's what comes operating across. like that yeah mm -hmm. yeah weaknesses obviously as I just said finance is <laughs> terrible numbers. yeah it's not my really strong suit bad. either really really bad again like from my first year experience of having to then force and take a time out is not knowing really when to put the brakes on and to mm. stop is probably a weakness. But I think that's something that anyone who starts a business has a difficult time with. It's yours, your yeah. baby. Having to hand that over to someone else to potentially run the day-to-day -day of things is yeah. quite a challenge yeah. to relinquish the control and make sure you've got someone yeah. you trust. Yeah. So Actually, but the guys that work with me, this is another strength I would say, is I've always purposely hired people that have got way more personality than me mm. so they come into this room and they are like they 110 percent yeah better than I am with people so I know when I leave them to it and they're operating the dodo when I'm not here that people are engaged and they love the guys that I've left in charge of the pub so mm -hmm. yeah well, it does come across very clearly just looking at your website and looking at your social media, particularly on your Instagram, that you talk a lot about who your team is, mm -hmm. uh, encouraging people to come in and say hello, telling your own story as to how you started the business and why you're here. Why is creating a sense of community important to you? I understand it's part of a micro pub in the broader concept, yeah. but for you specifically, why is that your you know, main motivator? It's just simply about human simplicity, human connection. Moving away from the corporate world was always about being successful, was being happy with who I am and what I've created. And, and that's why I wanted it to be a community. I wanted people to not feel lonely. So I want people to be able to come in here on their own and make friends. I love that people make friends in here, like genuinely, genuinely love that. It's just heartwarming. Like, why wouldn't you want to be a bit kinder or a bit nicer or, or leave a place where you've spent a couple of hours feeling a bit better about things in general. I just think something, a lot of spaces are missing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's Particularly kind of like, in this day and age too, yeah. when we're all just glued to our phones. Exactly. So there's a way to connect with someone not in front of you physically, yeah. but you lose something. Yeah, it's human connection. It's that interaction that you can't, that magic that you can't buy and sell really. Mm -hmm. Like to create a community in West London as well is quite a main feat. Like, you know, West London is not, is not the part of London that traditionally people think about community. It's, you know, it's a bit posh, some people might say, or like, you know, suburban and people keep themselves to themselves and, yeah. and they don't want to connect. But actually, it was important to create the opposite of that and to show people, actually, when you do invest a little bit of energy and time, then you can get way more back. Mm -hmm. And why the beer? 
Was it because <laughs> it brings people in? Did you have a love of beer? How did it, why a pub over a cafe or a restaurant or some other sort of community space? I think pubs are the anchor. Like I love, I've always loved hanging out in pubs. I've had many happy memories in pubs. So I just think pubs in general create that atmosphere that you're hoping to deliver when you want, you know, communities to form in the space that you have. Uh, and beer is just a fun, not very serious drink, right? Uh, it's not cocktails, it's not fancy, it's not wine, it's not like, oh, you know, levels of education before you're an expert. And it's very, um, well, it kind of fits with the micropub ethos, like unpretentious, mm -hmm. welcoming, warm, like mm -hmm. pull up a chair, grab a beer, chat rubbish, and there's, some, there's one for everyone as well, yeah, in exactly. that sense. There is a load of variety, and you can find the one that suits you best, or you chat to your neighbour and say, oh, what are you drinking, and yeah. why did you pick that beer? And then there's that instant connection and yeah. something to bond over. Yeah, did specifically choose real ale over other formats, although we do have bottles, cans, etc. Because the more I hung out in real ale spaces, they were just, like, the patrons were just really sensible and... Um, oh, like a different demographic and I thought as maybe yeah okay. maybe uh, it would bring a different dynamic to the pub having just pure real ale focus okay and of course you don't have a version of this with kegged beers only to have that comparison but has it brought in the type of crowd that you expected to attract it's brought in a younger crowd if I'm honest so I always thought when I first opened I was like so I'm a real ale pub and my market is going to be 60 plus majority mm. male and it's been a pleasant surprise to see a mix of everybody in here. So ages are, you know, the, the age range is slightly older, I would say, than your average kind of big lager sort of pub. So it's like 30 plus, I would say. Uh, slightly more majority male, but a, a mix of people and a mix of groups, partners, and people who just come in on their own. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been surprising, and a lot of young people as well. Mm -hmm. Loads and loads of young people, which I never expected. I guess too, it's partly you want to attract the local community, but do you find that a lot of people travel to come to you as well? Yeah, we have, um, it's majority local community that come in here, uh, but we have a lot of what I call beer tourists. So yep. if we've got a particular cask on, you know, you'll get a crowd of people coming in because they want to try that beer. Yeah. Beer tickers often come in as well. And a lot of camera guys come in in their group so we might get like a camera group from Norwich come down one mm -hmm. afternoon or something like that. Oh that's great doing a little tour of the micro yeah. hubs and things. So let's talk a bit about your marketing since that was your <laughs> strength. Um, how do you get the word out about the pub? I've only ever focused on social media marketing. A because it's a social space so it felt like the natural channel. Mm -hmm. uh, B because it's free yeah. <laughs> and I'm a small business and I don't have loads of money. So you can do it yourself from your phone while you're in the space. Exactly, exactly. And and being a small business and, and having to be a lot of the time at the forefront of the business because it's your business and, and you're projecting that culture and creating that brand it just seemed easier for me to just focus on social media where it's a lot more personal mm -hmm. uh, where I can show up and hey guys this is what's going on at the moment these these are the challenges I'm facing come with me on this journey and this year has been the only year that I've actually spent money on <laughs> marketing okay. which is incredible two and a bit years in yeah so we've done um like a postcard like a flyer that went to to notify the neighbors yeah, and to all like of that. the local um community and I had a new website uh, like photography full website design etc yeah, done yeah photography's beautiful <laughs> go check out the website and so, social media what's your social media so, uh, can so you, you can find me at the dodo micro pub okay perfect yeah, go look at it, because it's definitely you come across very authentically in yeah. all of the marketing. And it's great, because that's, again, as we were saying earlier, sort of people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And if you were there to tell your story, then it's so much easier for people to connect with it right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's funny, because people tell me that they connect with that side of things as well, and it's an honour to, to hear it from them. It means that something's going right in general in terms yeah. of marketing. Yeah. Well, definitely something is going right because you've won quite a few awards. Yes. <laughs> uh, in, was it just last year? You only opened in January 2017. Yeah. And in 2018, you were recognized by Camera, the campaign for Real Ale, uh, as the Ealing Pub of the Year. Yeah. And another one as well. So the region, so West Middlesex is my local camera branch. So wow, I went... so the city and the whole region. Yeah, yeah. You have won both. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. That's amazing. So how does that feel to have uh, your pub be recognized? 
It was a surprise, if I'm really honest, because I'd only been open, I think, 14-ish months when that award came about. And although I opened up a real ale pub, I'm not traditionally your typical real ale pub. You know, we, we've had lots of feedback from camera members and, and things that they don't enjoy about the dodo. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, because okay. they're quite vocal, and that's fine. They do and have I like opinions. Yeah, yeah, and I like to listen to what. And last year we did a, a research piece with patrons to, to listen about what they didn't like about the dodo because I never wanted to just be like, ah, oh, we're doing fine, we don't need to worry about mm -hmm. it. But it was a surprise and it was, it forced me to realise the success that I had as well because I'm so relentless in my day to day, I don't really Always stop and go. looking forward and yeah. never looking back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it was nice to see people celebrate that with me as well. Yeah. You seem to put on a lot of events now yes. as well in the space. Is that something new? Did you do that your first year? Or is that sort of the second year on? And why did you start offering events? We started it in the first year just because it kind of made sense. Because obviously being a local community-focused pub, we were like, okay, let's get Weird Beard in and then let's um, showcase yeah. other local breweries, breweries yep. uh, and talk about you know up-and-coming beer businesses that we really appreciate and love. So it kind of started off in the first year, then when things got a bit crazy, I sort of tailed off the events because I was just doing too much. too much, and then we brought it back and tried to do, or well, we have been doing it this year, is, is having a month, an event a month, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So we have little things in the background, like free cheese board Sunday is the first Sunday of every month. Oh, I'll come back for that, that sounds <laughs> <Do>. good. <laughs> it's fun, and then we do like a doodle at the dodo, so um, the local artist that did all the artwork for the dodo, she kindly donated all this artwork that wow. uh, you will see if you come into the dodo. She does um, illustrations as well. So Tuesday nights, the first Tuesday of every month is tonight. Uh, people come in and they just colour in and zone out and relax on a dreary Tuesday. Yeah, I've heard adult colouring books are very in yeah. at the moment. It's a way just to zen and yeah. have a beer with it. It makes it even better. So we do those little ones in the background and then we do the brewery events. So last week was Siren Tap Tokeover and a, a cheese pairing went along with that as well. And those ones are always just really well attended. It's like a beer party. So mm -hmm. people really love them as well. Just people always provide just really good feedback. And do you find it's more the beer geeks again that are coming in for those events or it's the local customers who are engaging as well? Is it a nice mix of both? It's a nice mix of both. So hardcore local regulars, I like to call them, they always, they, they put the events in their diary like immediately. Yeah. And they always ask me, what have you got coming up next month? And then, yeah, people will travel in for the kind of bigger brewery events or yeah. breweries that, you know, they love. Which is nice too. You've got the people who are just here for the space, essentially, yeah. in the community that you've created who then can get into the beer world. Yeah. And then others who are from the beer world who can share their expertise or their passion that sort of thing which is the whole goal right getting yeah. people to interact and exactly yeah engage with each other in a way that we wouldn't do yeah well that we do online but not <laughs> as authentically in real life tell me about a moment in the pub that you just felt like yes this is why I did this oh that is a good question the yes moments when I got the two camera awards sort of early on in the business that was a massive yes moment because I hadn't really stopped and mm -hmm. thought about what I'd created and hadn't really sat in a room with people who enjoy what I was doing and, and become face to face with them, like people thanking me for opening the space and them telling me what they get out of the dodo. I think that was the first sort of big, wow, I've actually created something here, like I've managed to do it yeah. moment for me. It's always people, when people tell me about how they experience the space, that's when I get those like fist that pump little, moments. Yeah. yeah. What are some of the most unexpected things that you've learned through owning your own business? To expect the unexpected is always what you should. Is there a story there? <laughs> like, what's the latest? No, it's a funny question, actually, because um, I put this out on my social media a couple of weeks ago. Every time I have a business high, a business low immediately oh, proceeds. right it. after. Okay. And it's a weird yin and yang spooky universe thing it that, that I that don't balance. enjoy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's why... I've said expect the unexpected basically okay. it's like when you're doing well and something's going really right it's like somebody's going to come and punch you in the face so just be ready <laughs> oh dear okay <laughs> that's not very positive how actually. do you that's okay it's it's realistic how do you prepare yourself for it it has probably taught me to enjoy the highs a lot more than I currently do again back to that whole let's just keep going you know I've got a business to run uh, knowing that the next high I have is probably going to be preceded by a massive low, as it normally is, um, it will teach me to enjoy the big highs, take it in, mm -hmm. take stock, 
way more than I probably currently do. What advice do you have for other people who are looking to open their own business, um, sp whether it's a pub, micro pub or not, uh, or about people getting into the beer industry? I always say to people, talk to somebody who's already doing what you're doing. Like I have a lot of people come to me going, oh, I want to open up this craft beer space or I want to open up a micro pub. Uh, and that's great because I will spend time talking to them. It's free, why wouldn't I? And I want to see more fun beer businesses out there. I wish I'd just done way more of that before the dodo was even a thing, just going to more kind of micro pub or beery spaces and just talking to owners, you know, business people, bar managers, etc. Mm -hmm. Just to absorb the knowledge. So um, just learn from other people. Never be afraid to ask questions. And do you feel like most people would give you that time? You're very kindly giving it to other people, but you think if you were to ask anyone, they would give you a bit of their time for some advice and some chat? Massive, especially massively in, in the micropub community in particular. So I did spend a lot of time with micropubs before I got up and running. Mm -hmm. And they would, one guy actually, he he doesn't own it anymore. He sold his business. But Nick, who used to own the Brooksteed Ale House in Worthing, he was like, come down for the afternoon. We'll spend a couple of hours talking about the startup process, everything you need to do. And then if you want to do, do bar work, you know, in the evening with me. Mm -hmm. um, and just for him giving me a whole afternoon out of his busy schedule plus then letting me having never really poured a pint before <laughs> come and help him on a Thursday night yeah. uh, and be so encouraging about like my idea as well just it was a massive confidence boost yeah oh that's really kind and then you can pay that community forward yeah. by creating it here exactly how did you get that pub experience to learn not only how to run your own bar and to prepare your cellar but to train your staff to do it as well uh, just again through talking to other micro pub owners, learning from them. It's not rocket science. Like I know sometimes in um, in the Twitter sphere, there's often a lot of talk about oh, car scale is really hard to keep, and you know you need to know what you're doing. It's not that hard at all. Like it really winds me up when people are like, oh, it's really hard. It's like it's not. Like I look, I learn off the internet, off other people. Um, they passed on their knowledge. I pass on that knowledge. You know, it's it's just keeping things clean and appreciating the product that's come in. That's uh, that's all it is. I asked that exact question of Annabelle Smith, who's on the episode prior, as she is a beer educator and a beer sommelier, and her specific focus is on cask. And I said that same thing. Why is cask beer so difficult to keep? And she just said, it's not. Yeah. You just need to learn how to do it. It's like learning how to drive a car. Exactly. At first, it's so many things to think about. It's quite intimidating. But once you learn how to do it, you don't need to think anymore. Yeah. You yeah. know what you're doing. Exactly. All right, so we need to change that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> and just say it's not a difficult product to keep once you learn how to do it. Yeah. And it's all about enjoying it. And like you said, passing on the right experience yeah. to your customers. So why the Dodo? What's the story behind the name? So it's a two-part series on why we called it the Dodo. So my surname is Doe, uh, so it's a nod to the family name, just because my dad is the original gangster and he <laughs> is a massive inspiration and entrepreneurial at heart. So uh, I remember one day when I was a bit fed up with work, we just had this frank conversation and, you know, he's like, he basically put the arts, planted the seed in my head. He was like, you know, you can do whatever you want to be doing, Lucy. One day you might open up your own business. And I thought, wow, I never really thought about that actually, mm. but thanks dad. And then like trundled off having eaten amazing Vietnamese food and thinking, oh, my dad's supporting me in this. Maybe I will go and open up my own business yeah. one day. So part of, a, a nod to the family name, <laughs> My, my dad's a big beer drinker, so um, he, well, he's not a social well. beer drinker, though, but uh, I think he quite likes the fact that it's called the Dodo for that reason. And then partly because of what micropubs are doing. So micropubs are like pubs used to be back in the day when local communities would basically go to that one local pub and find out all the local gossip and connect with each mm. other and, and keep the community going. So it's a nod to something that doesn't really exist anymore, like micropubs are trying to bring that old school concept back. Mm -hmm. Where it's space to connect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. I like that. It's a very good story. And there's lots of dodo motifs all yeah. around the pub as well. Yeah. Uh, so what's next for the dodo? Good question. So I, when I even, well, first year I was always like, I want multiple sites. Like that was always my vision. Like I'm going to wow. build a community and then I'm going to replicate this community situation Wherever somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, we should be concentrating on building communities out there. And then... Basically, this year is more about slowing down and almost taking a step back and focusing really hard on, on what I'm doing with current number. Mm -hmm. 
one. So what is working in the dodo, what isn't working in the current dodo before I start going, oh, I'm gonna open up another site and I'm gonna build exactly what I've done here because A, I've realized I would stretch myself too thin mm -hmm. and I would end up being in that weird exhausted mess that I was yeah, in my first year. Back there again. Um, so I want growth and I want to replicate what I did and, and continue to, to build communities and spread the message. But realistically, this year is about knuckling down, being more organized, actually putting a proper marketing strategy together. Oh, your um, expertise. So that would be good. <laughs> Continue to build the brand that exists currently, concentrating on keeping the local community happy. And then when it's nailed, then, then it's on to the next bigger project. Growing from there. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of taking a bit of time away, do you have much time outside of the beer industry or are you still very focused on the business? Do you ever get a little bit of a break or when you do, what do you do with your time? Uh, I do have time away from the business, which is a luxury because I know a lot of other small business owners don't have that luxury in the first couple of years they're going. But wow, I do. You did definitely overdo it. Well, well, yeah. The sound of things. <laughs> so you're just clawing some back the second year. <laughs> but I do spend a lot of time in the industry, whether it's hanging out with beer people or just going to a pub, or even when I'm enjoying. Like, I love food. Like, my other passion is food. Even if I'm just going out for a meal, I'm, all, I'm still constantly like, oh, well, they've done it like this, or isn't that a good idea? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm never not on, but I've made a very conscious effort this year to step away from the beer industry a little bit this year and go into wider kind of entrepreneurial communities. Mm -hmm. uh, and communities that are important to me. So, like, female business communities I've spent a lot more time in. So I've joined an online female business community called The Coven and um, hang out there online with them and, and try and connect with other female entrepreneurs plus uh, go to like female entrepreneur kind of networking events just because it's nice to sometimes step out of the industry and get inspiration from elsewhere not just beer yeah with people who are in a similar role to you yeah but in a very different business yeah do you have any challenges you feel as a female business owner that you wouldn't have if you were running a business in the beer industry as a man yeah, because there's always the unfortunate underlying sexism that I'm sure lots of women on the podcast have mentioned. So, for example, before the dodo got up and running, I had a meeting with the local police about the idea and they flat out told me, um, we have to be seen to be objecting to what you're doing because you're a female opening up a licensed premise. And I was like, wow, that's what? deep. Like, you literally know holds bars. Like, that is the reason why you are objecting to this place up and running, getting up and running. And I just had to what? take it on the chin and then go, do you know what, I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna prove every single person every wrong. Every one of you like, wrong. Like, do not yeah. doubt women oh my goodness. in general. I do yeah. not doubt this woman I mean, in particular. My face isn't captured on the <laughs> podcast, but I like ran out of words there. I can't believe they actually said that. Yeah. But if a man had have come to them with the same proposition, it would have been no problem. Yeah. They were objecting simply because you were a woman. Yeah, and to wow. be told that in, you know, plain English, no black and white. Terms. Yeah. yeah, you're just like, oh, okay, well, the only step is to keep moving forward with it, show them that I've got exactly the skills that are required to be able to run a sensible wow. uh, premise. So there's, there are challenges, and you can't deny that, and that is a hard core example of the, the female challenge out there. Yeah, just how many steps back we are before we've even yeah. gotten started. And I've had to write wow. a blog post about conversations not to have in the micro pub space because... Uh, actually it didn't happen to me but um, a few instances with a female member of staff that I employed were a bit uncomfortable and I just thought well I'm not having this like don't don't make my staff uncomfortable like mm. that's just wrong and they wouldn't be doing it to me because then it's a power play thing because yes. I'm the owner of the business you won't say these things to my face but because she's not the owner she is employed by me you feel like you can say these really inappropriate things to her and that is that was absolutely not on so there are challenges, but they're just wider society challenges that we all just have to, I guess, stand up to and be a bit more confident about going, do you know what, that's really not on. Yeah, and I can do this just like anyone else yeah. can. Final question, what do you enjoy most about being a part of the beer industry? I love the general niceness that comes with being in the beer industry. So before I knew what I was going to do, I was like, oh, I love beer people. Like, they're, they're pretty cool. They're like, you know, pretty relaxed. No one's... It's, uh, it's a community, actually. That's probably the best way to put it. It's definitely community over competition. Like, if I've got a problem, I might go to another pub, and they're not like, get out of our faces, Lucy. Like, we're not discussing this with you. They're like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, have a think about this, or oh, we'll lend you X, Y, Z. I think 
it's supportive, it's very open, and it's pretty cool, basically. <laughs> and it's pretty cool. I like that. I really like that. Well, thank you very much for making the time for me. It's been so nice to chat with you. No, thank you for coming all the way to Hanwell. <laughs> all the way to Hanwell. Well, now that I'm here, I'm just going to soak up the space and yeah. enjoy it. So thank you. No, thank you. Thanks for having me and Lucy. And thanks for all of your brilliant insight into business ownership. Come on back next week to hear from Louisa Zion, Global Brand and Sustainability Director for Toastale. Chat soon.